Hello, and welcome to this Processing Industry Brief. I'm Processing Magazine Editor Jesse Osborne, and I'm joined again today by David Brewer of SEPCO. David, it's good to talk with you again. Thank you for having me. It's good to talk to you as well. In our last video, we talked about SEAL technology solutions for food and beverage processing environments. Today, however, we will be discussing a different topic, specifically stuffing box reliability. To start things off, what is a stuffing box? And what do you mean when you talk about stuffing box reliability? Okay, great. Uh, yeah, so a stuffing box is uh, basically, in, in layman's terms, it would be the space in between the atmosphere side of the, the equipment and the process side of the equipment. So let's take into uh, consideration a pump, just a standard garden variety pump. Um, basically, there are three components to a pump. There are, there's the motor, there is the power frame, and then there's the wet end of the pump. And basically along from the motor, a, a shaft is coupled to a power frame and from the power frame, the shaft is connected to an impeller that goes to the wet end of the pump. And between that is what we call a stuffing box. And that is where we can either put A, a mechanical seal uh, to seal uh, the process or B, packing. And today we're going to specifically talk about packing and, um, and stuff in box reliability as it pertains to mechanical packing. What are the main factors that determine stuffing box reliability? Sure. So, um, so there's several things I, I brought with me. I have a little uh, sort of a glam follower makeup and the way it works for packing, at least uh, since we're going to be focusing about uh, mechanical packing is Packing is basically, for all intents and purposes, it is a, it's a textile at best. Um, there are a lot of different factors that determine what we recommend and what we use um, uh, as it pertains to uh, the process and, and how um, we select the correct packing for the correct application. Um, and the way that works is, so there are, there's what we call a pH chart. And the pH chart basically ranges all the way from zero to 14. Um, zero being on the very acidic side of things and 14 being on the extreme caustic side of things. And somewhere in the middle around seven is, is neutral. Um, but what we at SEPCO deal with, uh, we deal with everything from, from high, you know, strong chemicals to all the way on the caustic side to strong caustics. And we have to recommend a packing or a textile there, therefore, uh, that would be compatible with that with that type of uh, that type of material that, that we're that we're pumping or agitating. So, when when we are installing mechanical packing, what we are doing is we are trying to take a textile, uh, which is a soft material, and we are trying to radially expand that that textile. And basically on the bore of the stuffing box, we're creating a, um, a static seal or maybe even a gasket there uh, for, for better, better terms. Uh, and then on the ID, we are creating a, a dynamic seal. And so therefore, when there is a mechanical load on, on a set of packing and we readily expand it, we have three or four, maybe five pieces of packing within that stuffing box that are being radially expanded. Um, what, it, what our job is, what SEPCO's job is, is to create and to identify the right textile for the right application. And in order to do that, we take all sorts of factors into consideration, um, shaft speeds, uh, chemical, com chemical compatibility, um, and pressures. And those three uh, types of, and temperature, excuse me, so four things, temperatures as well. Um, those four things determine what type of textile we use for that specific packing. Um, we are, um, at SEPCO, one of the things that you will find, uh, we have over 700 different styles of packing that we braid uh, for inventory. So um, we're not short in, in terms of uh, being able to recommend the right packing for the right application. Um, but, but given that, uh, basically it boils down to understanding the physics of the stuffing box, understanding uh, how we are going to seal that with the right type of packing. And then um, in here in the next couple minutes, I'm going to explain to you the installation process and why that's so important to maintain stuffing box reliability. David, you mentioned installation. 
Why is that so critical? And what are some things that can go wrong? Yes, well, so insulation and then, and, and, you know, backing up, when we go to a, I teach all these classes um, and from plant to plant, uh, everything is so different. But one of the most common factors in uh, looking at maintenance uh, procedures is everybody does it different. Um, but uh, one of the most common things that we see out there is when they, when a, when a mechanic goes to pack a pump or, or an agitator or any piece of equipment for that matter, um, one of the biggest problems that we see out there in the field is getting those first couple rings that you put inside the stuffing box to seat properly. And what I mean by that is if you were to take a set of packing and let's just take, let's, let's say five rings, that seems to be probably one of the most common uh, uses of packing out there is that, that five, five rings go inside of the stuffing box. If we were all, if we were just to stuff four rings in a row without actually getting them seated in the bottom of the stuffing box, we effectively cannot create a gland load that transfers from the fasteners that push this packing in all the way to the bottom of the stuffing box and get that very first ring of packing that was installed to properly radially expand. What we've done at SEPCO and what we show our customers and our end users in the field to properly do is use the proper tools to get these rings to seat properly. And the way you do that is what we've got here, we call them seated tools. They're aptly named for what they're designed to do. But, um, but these are basically corrugated pieces of plastic that are, that are dense and they're color coordinated for cross section reasons, but this one specifically is for half inch. And what this does is this is just an extension of the gland follower. So that very first ring that you put in the stuffing box, it will properly seat. It will actually radially expand and create the gasket on the bore that I was talking about earlier and the dynamic seal uh, on the shaft uh, as well. Um, and we wanna repeat this every single ring we put in. So we put the first ring in, we take these back out. We do the second ring, the third ring, the fourth ring and the fifth ring. And the idea is that the whole set of packing is uniform from the very bottom of the stuffing box all the way to the gland follower. And, and I'll tell you, it does a couple things for you. The most important thing it does is if you've, if you've selected the right textile or the right type of packing for your application, you can actually affect uh, and effectively control the gland water that's being used to cool your packing um, better if you have each ring set properly. And so um, it, it, from, from my experience in the field and when I do this out with, with my customers and my end users and we use these seated tools properly, we almost always have, you know, their number one goal is to get from outage to outage, um, meaning from the time they do all their maintenance work to the very next time they go down and cold uh, to do more maintenance work, we are making sure that, that those pieces of equipment that we pack last, the, you know, the entire, uh, entire time. Sometimes that's 18 months in between uh, repacks. So um, using these seated tools um, and using a tool that makes sure that we get these rings to radially expand inside the stuffing box are key. Are there any other factors that affect packing life and successful sealing? Yeah, there's quite a few actually out there, but one of the ones I wanted to, to mention to you and talk to you today about was um, when we, we actually at SEPCO have a, a company that, that we have called P3 Dynamics, P3 Plastics. They actually are a company that manufactures a, a part that we call a hydroload. And what a hydroload does is, and effectively, it, it actually acts as a bearing. This is a, a bearing grade a piece of uh, PPS, um, and um, it is actually used in the, to put in the bottom of the stuffing box to, to stabilize the shaft, to make sure that that shaft stays centered in the stuffing box and doesn't vibrate, does not, you know, you get a lot of chatter, uh, shaft deflection, what have you, that could, that could maybe cause your packing to fail prematurely. Uh, what a hydroload does is a hydroload actually goes in the bottom of the stuffing box. It usually takes up two, maybe three rings of packing, and it stabilizes that shaft. It keeps that shaft stable inside the stuffing box so that it doesn't move. 
um, uh, and that is centered. Um, the other thing we do with that is we actually put with it a, uh, a lantern ring um, that's not integral. Um, actually, uh, we don't want the lantern ring to be integral to, to our hydro load, meaning that the two parts are together. Because if there's ever any heat generated from um, excessive wear, um, we don't want these two pieces to fuse themselves together. We want to be able to remove this piece, put a new one in, and then and repack. But uh, let me just kind of demonstrate here with you guys what it does. If you were to use a shaft, and I was, I was actually trying to, without doing this, you can see that there's a lot of room in, in that stuffing box. And this is, this is a, actually a model of a 31, uh, a Gould's 3196. If I was to put this in the stuffing box, along with this, you can see that that shaft stabilizes immediately doesn't move at all. Um, that's what we're doing in the field with these. We put these in mixers, agitators, pumps, um, all sorts of different equipment. Um, and uh, we've seen tremendous amounts of um, increased reliability uh, with, uh, with putting these, putting these in, the, in the equipment. In addition to using this hydroload system to properly stabilize your shaft, um, we are also able to save and conserve water um, by using these maintenance techniques that we are promoting. Um, we have proven time and time again that with proper installation procedures and use the use of a hydro load system, we are able to conserve and document water conservation efforts. David, thanks for your time today. Before we wrap things up, where can viewers find out more about SEPCO and its products and solutions? So the best place to go is www.sepco.com uh, and you can browse our, our website and you will find all sorts of uh, great resources and uh, great pieces of information. That concludes today's industry brief. Thank you for watching.